Hey everybody, Fun Stampers Journey Coach Janice Whiting here. I am your Executive Manager, Coach number 33. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a third card using our super fun, super festive Flannel Life background stamp set. I have been in love with this stamp set and I am so inspired to create that I've created, I think, four cards. One of them I cannot show you because it is specific to our Coach Collective um, that I have for sale, by the way, um, and it's going to be for the December Coach Collective. So you can go to my blog, which is www.janicecreates.com. Click on the file that says Coach Collective or the page tab, and you can find out all the information about that there. Definitely don't want to miss that if you haven't checked it out already. Um, and, but the others I've showed you. So where's that last one? So this was the first one I came up with using the buffalo plaid, the black and uh, red uh, flannel print there. And then the last card I just showed you, the video I did, if you checked it out, I made this cute little, very simple. Now you'll see the kind of the theme is very clean and simple, um, very easy to recreate. And I'm sorry the light is so off here, but um, there's that one. And today's, da -da -da -da, um, I am creating or recreating for you this card. Isn't that fun? So they all have this buffalo plaid um, a little tie to them. So theme. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to create this. Um, it is all, they are all very simple to create and this one also follows that pattern, all right? So um, I think that's it. I feel like I should say something else, but I think that's it. Let's go ahead and turn the camera view over and show you how I did it. All right, so here's the beautiful card. So fun, you'll notice the pattern. I'm using the black sparkle tape again. Very similar design. I've got the um, piercing element rectangle piece to it. Let me open it up so you can see that a little bit better. I'm keeping our holiday script, just using a different word. Isn't that so pretty? And I love the sparkle tape in the background, shimmering and shining, so fun. So again, you're gonna start with a regular A2 um, card base in whipped cream. Um, I went ahead and I pre-die cut out the piercing elements, but I'll, I'll go ahead and bring back the Journey Rectangles uh, box so you can see, or envelope, Journey Rectangles. Again, it's 12 dies. Six of them are actually um, die cutting, so it cuts the actual rectangle. And then the other six are, as I showed in my last video, this piercing element bit. We have quite a few of our uh, die sets that have a piercing element to them, which is really, really fun. All right, so you'll need that. And then from there, you are going to um, need a basic die I say a basic die, the poinsettia die. And this is one of our steel roll dies. And these are heavy duty. They are intended to be able to cut multiple sheets of cardstock at one time. They're very strong, they're steel roll, and they fit our maze machine, which if you've been listening to me, then you know that it is on sale. That's right, Black Friday sale. Um, normally 139, and the maze machine is going to be $75 um, from Black Friday through um, Cyber Monday. So you're gonna use that die, uh, that steel roll die to die cuts the poinsettia in our cranberry bliss uh, cardstock. It's really, really pretty um, red cardstock that we have. We actually have a few different shades of red, but this one is kind of a mix between our really bright candy apple and a little bit darker uh, pomegranate splash. So you're going to cut just one of each of the size. So one large, one medium, and one small. And I'll show you how I put that together in a minute. All right, and then you're also going to use another one of our steel rule dies called Timeless Foliage, and that looks like this right here. And we're gonna cut just this middle sprig out. So I've gone ahead and I've cut it out. I've actually cut it out twice using our Fresh Forest uh, cardstock and it looks like a big mess right here because I've die cut it and then I've trimmed it. So uh, please forgive me because I had trimmed it earlier when it first comes out of that, um, uh, out of the die, it'll look something like this. If I can put this back together here for you, it'll look like this. Okay, so then you're just gonna take um, your 
scissors and you're going to trim it. You'll trim this piece off so you'll have to make one cut here and one cut on the leaf and obviously you'll cut the stem off. Okay, It's just quite long for creating that little uh, swag piece up there so we just cut that off. And you're going to do that for both of them. So you'll end up having two large and two of the smaller um, little sprigs. Okay, And this is in our Fresh Forest cardstock. You're also going to need um, to uh, die cut the leaves and two of them. I say two of them, two of each size, I should say. So two of the larger ones and two of the smaller ones and set those aside. You will need one of our medium rainbow drops in the little yellow. Now in my original card, I used a large one. Let me bring it back over here. I used a large one, but I'm going to try and see what a medium one uh, does. You can decide if you like the larger or the medium. We're going to we're going to do a little test today, okay? Um, and then of course um, our black sparkle tape, which I'll bring out a little bit later, and then a piece of our cranberry bliss that has been stamped using our flannel life stamp set, which I showed you earlier on, which is kind of the hero or the theme of these cards. So flannel life stamp set. Um, and um, I'm not gonna show you how I printed it here, but I'll talk you through it. Basically, I used my stamping tool. I cut a sheet that's about the same size of a card front here, so four and a quarter by uh, five and a half. I adhered it down using some low tack tape. I put the stamp and basically I inked it up and stamped it, uh, I believe like three times just so it would get a nice good deep impression. And then I had this piece to cut all of my other pieces from for all the other cards that I created. Next up, I'm going to use this as a card front and see if I can work backwards um, using this fun print. But for today's purposes, we just need it to be um, this length and I believe it's four and a quarter. So four and a quarter in length by one and three fourths. So four and a quarter by one and three fourths. And we're going to go ahead and create the peak here. And let's see here. I go up about one, two, three, four, about four and a half little squares up and right in the center. So that's about a half, one, two, three, four. And so right in the center of that, I just eyeball it and you're just going to cut a straight line going up. Okay, just like that. And then go from one corner to the peak. And you're going to turn it over. If you didn't cut it all the way, that's okay. We can trim that in a minute. Turn it over so you have the same angle that you're going to cut. And again, to so that peak that you created. And if you need to trim just a little bit more on both sides, you can. Oops. There it goes. And maybe I'll cut just a little bit more here. There we go. Now we've created that banner piece with that perfect little banner peak there. And I think we've got all our pieces out. So we've got our leaves, we've got our banner, we've got our little yellow um, uh, rainbow drop, and we have our four um, or excuse me, our three pieces for our poinsettia. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and show you how I created the poinsettia in a way that um, gives it a little bit of life. So right now we've just got this, and if you look up close, it actually has a little bit of shape to it and even a line down the center. So first I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out a little foam pad. This came with my stamping tool, and it's really easy to use for this purpose. Um, and all of our poinsettia pieces. And using my bloom tool and the embossing little ball attachment, I am going to take my um, leaves. I'm actually going to use, I'm going to draw the line on the quote unquote back. I can tell because the die goes down and it gives a little bit of a raised uh, surface on the edges, so I'll know. So on the back, I'm going to take my tool and I'm going to just draw a line straight from, I can zoom in, straight from the middle all the way to the tip. It doesn't have to be perfectly, and I usually do uh, two or three strokes or passes there just so that it's very visible. So what I'm basically creating is I'm creating the vein through the middle of the poinsettia petal here. And I don't 
not quite getting them perfect and that's okay. So when you turn it over, you'll see it's got that raised line. It's, just, it's basically just a little, nice little added detail. So I'm gonna do that on the backs of each of these. And again, I'm, I am pressing pretty firmly, not too hard that I puncture a hole in the paper, but firmly enough that it does give that impression. Okay, so that one's ready. And I'm basically doing that to all three of my petals. I say all three of my die cuts, rather, because there's quite a lot more petals than just three. And there we go. Now, I know um, sometimes with paper shaping, you can spritz it with water. You can do that if you'd like. For my purposes, I didn't really need to. It's not too much uh, paper shaping, so it, it kept, keeps its shape pretty well. Um, so the next and the last step for this as far as shaping it is I am going to go in a circular motion in the center. And as I do this, you're going to see those petals rising up. So that's really it. So basically I'm pressing firmly and you can see how the petals have now cupped to create a little bit of a bloom there. So I'm going to do the same thing here and the same thing on my small one. So basically, this little guy is ready to go. I mean, there are so many other ways to shape flowers. You can make the petals curl out, or you can make them curl in. But for our purposes, I wanted them to be pretty straight, like poinsettias usually are. Um, and really, the next step here is just to adhere them together. I'm going to use our Journey Craft Glue, which is on sale, 20%, our Black Friday deal. Um, all of our adhesives are on sale for 20% through Cyber Monday. So it's a great um, chance, opportunity to get your get stocked up on your adhesives. This is my favorite glue, my favorite liquid glue, our craft glue here. It works fantastically. It does dry clear. So if you see how some of it is peeking through the um, edges, that is okay. All right, because it's going to dry clear. And the awesome thing about this glue is that it is pretty quick drying but it does give a little bit um, of, gives you a little bit of wiggle room because it dries fast enough where you can kind of glue it on and move on, but not too quick that you can, you know, if you need to, you can create, you know, if you have a mistake, you can go and you can fix it. Uh, now what I'm gonna do now is I am going to um, adhere this, but if I just put this directly on, because they're see-through, transparent, you, you won't be able to see the yellow very much. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take um, a little bit of glue, and I am gonna glue this to a piece of our paper. All right, and so um, just a scrap piece, and actually I found this backing of one of my uh, foam squares. I was like, oh, that's perfect. We're gonna use the backing. So I just glued it to the backing, and I'm gonna take my detail shears, and I'm just gonna trim around it. And if it shifts and it shimmies a little bit, that's okay. We'll trim it back um, as needed. But the whole purpose, of that, of this, is that it now has a white backing um, so that it will show yellow when you adhere it to your red cardstock um, because otherwise it will just be kind of an orange and I wanted it to be a true yellow. So there we go. Looks like I need to trim just a little bit here on the right hand side. Or was my left, but now my right. Um, my, uh, another way I thought about doing this is if you have like a white paint pen or a white correction pen, you can just color the back of it. All right, I think I got it just about over it. And then we can just kind of shimmy it to the parts that didn't quite get uh, glued on. All right, I'm go ahead and put my glue down. And then I'm just going to glue it right up on top. Now, if you'll remember from the beginning of my video, I said I was going to use a slightly smaller um, rainbow drop just to see. And I think I'm using, yeah, it's the medium one. 
There's the glue kind of coming out, but that's okay. Remember, because it's gonna dry clear. So let me go ahead and zoom out just a little bit and show you the big one. I don't know. I think I'm kind of undecided. I kind of do like the, the medium size little drop a little bit better. We'll see when it's on the card. Okay, so the last thing we'll do with this flower is kind of um, frost it up, but we're not gonna do that right this minute. I'm gonna move it off to the side, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring my card base back and start assembling what I've got so far, or what I've got um, cut out so far. So I'm gonna bring out my washi tape, and I'm using our black licorice sparkle tape. Isn't it awesome? And yes, I love my array of beautiful sparkle tape here. And I'm just gonna cut enough to have it go right across the card. And it goes about, what, half an inch or so from the top of the card. And I just try to line it up as best as I could here. Nice and straight. Oh, don't you love that sparkle? Man, it's one of my favorites. So nice and straight. And then take your details, pro shears, and just trim those edges up. Trim them flush with the sides so you don't have any of that excess showing through. There we go. I love that sparkle. I love how it's the camera and the light is picking it up so well. It is so fun and perfect to add a little bit of just holiday pizzazz is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> holiday pizzazz. Okay, so we've got that as the base. Is that straight, guys? I'm going to say this straight. looks... Oh, okay. It thanks. looks straight. Thanks, Bella. That's my daughter telling me that it looks mostly straight. Well, we're gonna say it is, okay? Although it just seems a little off, but we're just gonna keep going. Um, we are going to then take our beautiful banner that we created with our um, Flannel Life stamp set, and we're gonna take our, our craft glue and we're going to adhere it. Now you could pop the banner up, but because I made the poinsettia and it was you know, quite 3D enough, I went ahead and just put this flat on top of the card with no extra layer, which normally I'd want to pop it up, but you know, we can't have too much of that. I won't be able to put it in the mail. Although there is a 3D envelope box coming out with our new mini coming out in January 1st. So um, all of our worries about sending out bulky cards will, cards will, will be answered. Our a cure has been found. All right, so there I've got this beautiful, isn't that so pretty? I just love it. Okay, Merry Christmas, there it is. <laughs> uh, we're not ending there, we're not ending there. Before I add anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and add the sentiment, which I got from the holiday script. And I use the peace one, so it's this one right here. And I am gonna bring out my stamping tool because I, I think I'm addicted to it, I just love it. And I'm going to put my card here. I'm going to use my little magnets to keep it in place. What I love place? my, um, to keep the card in place. Yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't move. One of my favorite things is to have a nice, bold sentiment. So that's why I, um, I've always, my go-to is just to go ahead and break out the tool. All right, so I put this off to the side. Even though my card was fairly, everything was pretty centered, I wanted this to just kind of, have its own little place off to the side. I wanted to change up a little bit, play around with the design. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp this in our black licorice, which has been my ink du jour. I'm gonna do this a couple of times again. Reason being, I just love my sentiments to be nice and bold. I love that, so pretty. I love this script, holiday script. And it comes with the word peace, joy, Christmas, and believe. Ooh, pretty. All right, so that's done. And so really all that we have left to do is we are going to assemble the greenery and uh, put a little bit of the frost on the flower. Let me go ahead and bring it off side, side by side here. There we go. All right, so again, you've got the two larger stems and the two smaller stems. It's pretty, pretty quick and pretty easy. So I just put a little bit of Journey uh, craft glue on one end and I tried to make this E. I didn't want the green to be sticking out too far from the card. 
just again thinking of envelopes and such. And the other stem you will turn the other direction, okay? I know sometimes um, I would get worried about that because I didn't want it to look any different, but it won't look different, it looks great. So basically corner to corner. And then you follow it with the little smaller branches um, kind of right below it. So a little bit of glue in the center and then just kind of follows it up in that direction. Same with this one right here. And again, the, I love our craft glue because you can, it does dry quick, but you can kind of shift and shimmy as needed for just a few minutes. I think that looks pretty good for now. Remember, you're about to put that beautiful flower right in the center, so no worries about other placement there. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna take our flower that we just created. Isn't that beautiful? It is very, it is definitely has a 3D element. You've got the little vines, or the, the veins rather, and I'm gonna put a little bit of journey glue right in the center there, and put it right smack dab in the center. And you can arrange your petals to where the center one goes right up front, or you can change it up if you like. All right, now from there, we still have our big leaves, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these in half. We're going to just use half of them because I really don't need a huge leaf in there. So I cut them. There's no space for me to put the long leaf. I mean, I could have adhered them first all the way in, but I liked being able to see the placement better with the flower already there. And I hated having to lift it up and, and it just, it was became a mess. So I was like, you know what? I'm cutting these in half <laughs> and we're gonna do it that way. Um, and I also didn't use craft glue for this. I used our foam square, so I wanted them a little bit uh, popped up a little bit. So I just put one of the small ones on the back and then I arranged them just so. And it's so much easier when they were cut in half. I just I didn't have to worry about space and shifting and shimmying so much. It just, it just worked much better. And I liked the um, 3D effect of the uh, pop dot foam square, rather, um, of the leaves. So just kind of play around with placement. I might have to shift a couple of them back in or back out. Uh, let's see, this one will go right in here, I believe. I feel like the last time I created the card, I definitely was playing around with them here and there. But that's leaves, they're flowers. Maybe this one will come out a little bit more. And about maybe here. There we go, beautiful. All right, I love it. All right, so now for the final touch. So the final touch, we are going to add a little bit of craft glue to our tips, and then we're going to add a little bit of uh, some of our sparkle cuts. And it's okay if it's moving. Remember, I use some of our craft glue and it will shimmy just a little bit and that's okay. And I actually even put some on the tips of the little greenery sprigs. Just a little bit, they're frosted too. There we go. All right, then I'm gonna bring over my media tray because I'm going to need something to collect all of my sparkle cuts in once I've got them um, spread in. So I'm gonna bring my media tray over. I'm gonna grab my sparkle cuts, and these are our larger, um, our larger, chunkier glitter. And I'm gonna put some directly over each area that I put the craft glue on. And you may notice our craft glue is pretty thick, and I love that. And then I'm just gonna press down, just so that it adheres, the sparkle cuts adhere to it more quickly. Maybe shift it a little bit. There we go. Let me grab a few more. And then just kind of press down over it. Yeah, just making sure that all of them, because they're chunkier, they almost need a little bit of help 
and stick into our glue because if you just kind of sprinkle them and leave them, you'll get a few to stick, but because our glue is quite thick, you, it needs a little bit of help in sticking. And I want nice chunky bits of there, of this sparkle on there. All right, so I'm just kind of getting all the excess out. All right, now from here, we're gonna use our, um, our modeling paste to add that extra white frosted look. So the look of snow on top of our leaves and just a little bit, literally just a bit around the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. We're gonna be using one of our blending brushes and I think I used a medium one last time. Um, gives it a nice little edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab our modeling paste. Here we go, journey modeling paste. It is perfect for this. And before I do, I'm gonna, get I'm gonna take our heating tool and I am going to just try to speed up the heating process here. All right, so that's mostly, I still see a little bit of white, remember our, our glue dries clear, but it's it's got a good bit already done. So we're gonna leave it at that and add the um, modeling paste to it next and I'll get my hand out of the way so not to create a shadow. So we're gonna take this and we are going to basically add little bits and pieces of this white paste to create a fun snowy effect, just like a touch of snow, a touch of snow. Um, so I'm gonna grab this and it is quite thick, so it might be a little chunky. So just kind of keep that in mind. And I am gonna add just to the edges and the tips of it, okay? M making that frosted, um, I'm gonna try to hold it so it doesn't shift so much on me. That The frosted glittery part mixed in with the white. It's gonna be super cool. You can lift up the petals, it might make it a little bit easier for you to add the, the little snow, the frost to it. Maybe come back for a little bit more. There we go. Now the one thing to remember, make sure as soon as you're done using this that you clean your brush because you don't want the paste to dry. It dries um, pretty solid. You don't want it to dry on your brush and then ruin your brush. That would be sad. And so on along the edges a little bit as well. And then maybe I will do it here on this one. There we go. All right, isn't that fun? So pretty. Um, I also did a little bit along the, just along the sides of the green parts. A little, this is a fern, a pine sprig maybe, maybe. And then here along this one and then just along the tips. Oops, I think I might have un Let's make sure that gets stuck back there. I did not do it on these these green ones. I wanted those to be solid just as um, to be an added contrast, okay? To give it contrast. All right, so I'm closing up my modeling paste. I'm sticking my brush in some water after I wipe it off with a wipey. Um, and let me zoom back out. And that is it for the card. All right, so there you have it, our beautiful uh, poinsettia card. Let me hold up the original one because you can see the difference in the size of the center. So which one do you like best? Well, hello. Which one? I don't know. I really kind of like the small center, but I think they're both pretty. 
Um, all right, so there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, the tutorial of making this card. It is uh, fairly simple. Um, putting the, together the poinsettia it takes us a few steps of uh, flower shaping and then of course embellishing it with the um, sparkle cuts and the modeling paste, but definitely worth it to create that fun frosted feel. And my flower needs to be moved over to the left. So we're going to do that, which is wonderful that I can still do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, it's off-centered. Um, anyway, so there it is. If you loved any of the products that I'm showing you today, then you can visit my website, which is www.funstanfordsjourney.com forward slash Janice Whiting. You can shop there like you would any online store. Just click on the shop link. And don't forget our Black Friday sale. Our Amaze Machine is on sale for $75 and our adhesives are on sale for 20% off. So that includes our Journey Glaze, our Foam Squares, our Tape Runner, um, our White Liner Tape, all of our adhesives, so 20% off. All right, so make sure you take advantage of that. Okay, guys, I think that's it for me today. Um, I will probably come up and do another one, maybe one more, uh, highlighting this fun Flannel Life stamp set, creating the Buffalo plaid print. Um, I'll go ahead and show you again the three cards that I've made so far. The fourth card is um, going to be in our Coach Collective. Again, go to my blog, JaniceCrates.com, to check out more info on that. All right, I think that's it. I hope you guys have a fantastic Thanksgiving, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.